Hello, everybody. Happy Saturday afternoon slash evening. Hope yours is going well. We've got another Seahawks video to get to today, but first we just hit 4,090 subscribers to the YouTube channel. I want to give a shout out to all the subscribers and a special tip of the cap to all the channel members. Especially elite channel members, Brendan McKell, Hasher for MVP, Salacious Crumb, Rye Guy, Brendan Nelson's haircut, VGK Tigers, It's Hoof, The Reno, TVO, Austin Roberts, Scott Todd, PH Glass, Aaron Garrett, Arfman, Twelfth Man, Eli Bennett, Cassio Feria, Samoan, and JoJo. All right, we got ourselves another day of rookie mini camps to talk about. So, day number two of rookie mini camps at the VMAC. What did we learn? I'm going to go ahead and go over to the Cliff Notes version. Uh, there are multiple Twitter accounts you can go look at if you want to see an aggregate. Pete Carroll did a press conference on YouTube earlier this afternoon that you can go watch. So I'm just going to try to round up all the information. We got the best we can in a 10, 12 minute video. Um, before I get into the information, I want to once again thank uh, Corbin Smith. He was doing a lot of good work on Twitter to take some videos and record uh, snippets of conversations and basically do all he could to log the information learned today and see if there was anything beyond the obvious that could be noted about what he saw out there on the field and what he heard from players. And again, I want to thank uh, Mask Temple, who uh, helped with the thumbnail to this video. The thumbnail to this video was created by him, and he also did a lot of good work helping aggregate um, comments about uh, what happened today at Rookie Minicamp. So... Uh, I want to give a shout out to both those guys. Once again, they're doing a lot of good work to help keep track of everything going on at uh, Rookie Minicamp. So, day two of the minicamps, what did we see? Well, um, like day one, there was one particular player that was doing a lot of work stealing the spotlight, and it was Daryl Taylor. Again, it makes a lot of sense why he would be the star of the show, because he's technically not a rookie. He spent time in the NFL last year, even if he didn't play, and that's got to give you a leg up over the competition. But there was one other guy who seemed to put his uh, footprint on the team this this uh, this afternoon, and it was uh, Dwayne Eskridge. Now, these are the two guys you would expect to ball out in these rookie mini camps. These are two guys who were selected in the late second round, so they're top prospects, and they are guys who logically will slot in and contribute heavily for the team in 2021. So not really a surprise there, but it's good to see. Um, there weren't enough players for the Seahawks to do any 11-on-11 11 11, uh, work, but Dwayne Eskridge caught a deep pass from Danny Etling at one point in, uh, I think they did 7-on-7s seven and, um, you know, smaller groups. He also had a shot at another deep pass from Danny Etling where he got behind the defense, but... Uh, Etling missed the throw. Eskridge was able to barely get his hands on it, but could not bring it in. Uh, so he was showing off his speed, and he was showing off the ability that made him a second-round pick in the draft. So if there was any concern about his speed maybe not translating to the NFL, or maybe he only looked fast because of the level of his competition at Western Michigan, not too worried about that so far anyway. We, it seems like he was able to get behind the defense on multiple occasions today. So that was a very good. Um, Ashari Crosswell, one of the UDFAs we just brought in a couple days ago, uh, had an interception today of Danny Etling on an off-target pass, so that was notable. But um, again, a lot of the uh, comments, a lot of the interesting stuff that happened was with, with regards to Daryl Taylor. Uh, Carroll commented on Taylor's new role as a strong side linebacker. He's going to get a heck of a shot to show us what he can do there. He looks the part. So it seems like the plan, which initially looked like it was going to be a Cody Barton thing, the initial plan is going to be to let Daryl Taylor be the strong side linebacker, which I like. I actually like it. I don't love playing him out of position, but I do like getting him on the field in some capacity. So Carroll continues to say that he looks the part for a Sam linebacker. He also says that, that the uh, defensive line coach, Clint Hurt, was fired up about how Taylor looked today. So it seems like he's going to play that dual role like Bruce Irvin was going to for us last year. So that's great. Um, Carroll says that one reason why they're putting Taylor at Sam is because they want to have a viable pass rushing threat at that spot. 
So it seems like the team learned their lesson a little bit from last year when they were playing K.J. Wright at Sam, which worked out fine, but K.J. did not bring any real pass rushing talents to the table. So that was a limiter on our bear fronts, and this year we hope to have a real pass rushing threat in Taylor manning that spot because that opens up more stuff for you, and I, I, I think that that's going to be very valuable as this year goes on. A uh, couple other notes. This is just going to be kind of random stuff that um, came across my wire, came across my desk. Uh, Tamori and Terry had a hit pointer after landing funny yesterday, did not practice. Cade Johnson did not practice as well. So both of our... Oh, I'm sorry. Let me shut that up. Okay. Yeah, Tamori and Terry and Cade Johnson, both the UDFA wide receivers that we're really excited about, did not practice uh, today. So that's a little unfortunate. Those guys need every opportunity to make the team. That's something that can absolutely be the difference between making the team and not making the team. So hopefully that doesn't interfere with their ability in training camp when it starts. Uh, Carol also said that, you know, Eskridge, he kind of said what we already know. He He's fast, he's quick, he's a flyer, and that he was able to use those talents to get behind uh, the defense a couple times. Uh, Carol also went out of his way to praise Aaron Donkor quite a bit said he had a few plays that jumped out from yesterday's practice and again today he looks like he belongs on the field um about how co uh, also commented that he looks very comfortable at outside linebacker um i really don't think Donkor has a chance of making the 53 man this year because he has the free practice squad spot why not use it but the thing is even as a practice squatter, he can get called up twice over the course of the season without um, having to be brought up permanently. So look for that to be a potential um, a result of him looking good in these camps. Uh, one really interesting comment that came from Carroll today was he was asked about restructuring Russell Wilson's or Bobby Wagner's contract for salary cap space. And he basically said, we've discussed it, we've talked about it, we're aware of the possibility, but we haven't needed to yet. So the the fact that he said it hasn't been necessary yet kind of indicates that maybe they're thinking about doing it after June 1st when the cuts happen. Um, let's see here. What else? He also went to uh, talk about the uh, virtual meetings. He talked about the veterans because, as we all know, the Seahawks veterans have already said they're not going to be showing up for uh, um, optional OTAs this offseason and they plan to work out on their own. Um, Carol said that veteran players are still partaking in two hour virtual meetings every day and that the facility, while they're not going to force any players to come in to work out, he does have it open for them if for any veterans who do want to come in. Obviously you would expect the rookies to. And, um, he, he had a few other comments on that that were kind of interesting. He said that, um, um, he does expect that the young players who are here right now, you know, these rookies, these guys at the camp to take part in OTAs beginning May 24th, and I'll have more to say about that when May 24th comes around. And it seems like there is some there is some desire for the rook for the veterans to show up, at least some of them. So we'll see what happens there, especially with what's been happening with the Broncos players working out on their own lately. Um Carol had a comment on Trey Brown saying that he's very bursty. I think that's a positive thing. I don't know. That seems a little uh, bit of an odd comment, but um, he seemed to have some positive things to say about Trey Brown, although Eskridge did burn Trey Brown down the field on at least one occasion that I'm aware of. So um, he he's picking things up. There were also a lot of things said about Connor Weddington, which is an indicator that he may very well have a roster spot lined up for him. They said he's versatile, he's built well, he's strong, he's bright, and he's excited to have the chance to play in Seattle in front of his friends and family, which was a big part of the reason why he came here over a bunch of other teams. Um, there was a lot of stuff about Waldron's new system, about how intricate and precise it is and how Carol loves it, which I don't know if I'm excited about hearing Carol say that, but then again, what else is he going to say? Um, let's see here. Uh, any other notes that are kind of interesting? Um, yeah, again, Eskridge, uh, again, a lot of the praise that I saw in my notes were uh, heaped on Dwayne Eskridge being really fast and being able to get behind the defense. Danny Etling missed him on one opportunity for him to catch a deep pass and did not miss him on another one. And 
I think that's really about all you can say. Uh, Dwayne Eskridge and Connor Weddington, I think, both said that they um, played running back in high school. Uh, for Weddington, I think we knew that, but Eskridge playing running back in high school is pretty interesting. He says he loves to view the game from that position, which is awesome if you're into the yards after catch stuff, which I think Waldron is. Um, I think that's really all the information we can glean from today. Basically, the highlights of today were, once again, Daryl Taylor, and then you had Dwayne Eskridge burning the defense, and you had Aaron Donkor looking like he can play. Those are the three big takeaways for me today. Oh, and uh, Connor Weddington said that he actually had more money on the table from other teams, but he chose Seattle because he wanted to stay in Seattle, which is good to hear, you know? It's good to hear that he uh, prioritized that. It's good to hear that he um, decided to... Uh, stick it out in Seattle despite getting better offers. So I'm going to go ahead and end it there. Um, I, I, I like what I hear. The fact that we're hearing so much good stuff about Eskridge and Daryl Taylor is very promising to me for this season. And hopefully it translates when the actual games start. But uh, we have one more day of rookie training camp. I'll be coming at you with another video about it when it, when it comes. And I will see you guys later. Peace out. Go Hawks.